Holy Wire mod here. This is going to be tutorial 4D and how to build series where we're going to be going over AGP emitters. So let's start by getting rid of all of this right here. Just going to keep inputs and persist. And we're going to set up the AGP wire link right here. So let's do that. And I'm going to set this in air so we can deal with this screen right here, this emitter. So right here we go to visual screens and EGP version 3. So by default the screen type is screen, so you just set it to emitter and you can now spawn an emitter. You can only view the emitter from one side as you can see. So we're going to have to angle this. And I'm going to put it in the air a little bit. And you'll see why in a second. So if we go to the debugger and look at the emitter, as opposed to the screen, it only has one input, which is a wire link. So let's wire this up. We get to the chip. And there we go. Now it's connected. So let's go into the expression 2 chip. And we're going to draw a rounded box. So let's go EGP, rounded box, with an index of 1. So it's our first object with a position of 0, 0, and this is a VEC2, which cover in tutorial 4a of the Expression 2 series. And we have a size which is not limited to 512 by 512 like the screen is. In fact, we can go much bigger. All right, but you must keep the emitter in your screen or else the object's not going to show. Okay, so let's make this a more manageable size, 1000, 1000, and I picked these units on purpose so we can go over the next topic. So, but first you can actually do uh, object editing like you can on the screen. So you can set the color of the object, for example, vector 0, 0, 0. You can set the angle. I'm just going to set the color for now. And notice that it's kind of offset from the emitter right there. And we can actually fix that. But first, before we do that, I want to use as a tool to show you how to fix it, a triangle. So the EGP triangle has, and it's going to be our second object here, has arguments where it's your first position of the first point, or the first corner, the second position of the second point, or second corner, and the position of the third corner. So we have three different points here. Now let's set it or let's set this one to zero zero so we know where origin is. And let's set these to say 500 zero and negative 500 zero. So it's on the left and the right hand sides of our black box up there. Right? Oh, it's a line because they're all on the zeroth axis. So let's instead now, since that's the zeroth axis and we confirm that that's a zero axis right there, we can now say, uh, let's take the extreme and go down in the y direction. And you go downwards with a positive number, by the way. Uh, so that's interesting. Okay, so look how far down it's gotten. The triangle. And actually, let me use a object to represent this. I'll use this baby as a laser pin. So notice we have the triangle at the halfway point of the square. And this end, or the bottom side of the square, is at the halfway point of the triangle. Which means that this little triangle right here is at the uh, 3 fourths Point, which means that this right here, this emitter, this is the important part, is three-fourths of the way along here. So this whole square is 200 or 1,000 units long. So if we take 75% of that, that leaves us right here at the positive 250 mark. Okay? So if we have an offset, we'll just set our baby pointer right here. If we now set or define an x offset like this and we set it to around 250 and then we add the x offset 
to every object. So we'll do that for this X, this X, this X, and this X. Now it centers it right there. So if you're curious how to center it along the X axis, that'd be one way. Now it's not completely center because the emitter is actually about five units. If you want to get to the center of the emitter, this is actually centering it to the left side of the emitter right here. So if you want to center it to the center of the emitter, you have to add another five units. So we'll do that. So the next question is, is the same thing true for the Y axis? So if we were to put a Y offset of 250 and we were to add that to here, would it balance it out? Now that's the big, big uh, money-making question here. So let's try that. So we'll add Y offsets here. We set it to 250 and it doesn't quite work. It actually, if I take my baby pointer, it only goes about halfway. So we go here and we move directly left. It's about halfway here in this triangle. So maybe if I double it then, so let's see if I double it. So I'll double this Y offset and say 500 instead of 250. And it's close, very close. So what if I modify this triangle? So let's modify instead of 1000, how about we go an eighth of that? Okay, so let's take it and divide and take by two again. So we'll put a sixteenth instead of an eighth. All right, now it's really close. Oh, it's really close. So if we take a thirty-second instead of the sixteenth, right there. So this is going to compensate for the distance. So one thousand divided by thirty-two. That's going to give us approximately about 31, 32, something like that. And so let's bring this number instead. So let's reset this triangle. Let's bring this number instead to instead of 30, we'll say 40 for the Y offset. So when we do that, notice uh, that the emitter is now in the center of this thousand by thousand square. So if you want to make modifications and everything, if you want to make this triangle actually fit inside the square, you can do that by subtracting this by 500. I'll put that there. And lastly, I want to show you something for fun, and that's to modify the corners of the rounded box. You do EGP radius. So we go index 1 to reference this rounded box, which is the first object, just as we did with the color and we'd put some number from 0 to 512. So why 512? That's because it's a frequently used binary number. Uh, so is 1024 and things like that. So let's set this dx and we'll say that interval 10, just to demonstrate how this works, x plus plus and if x is greater than 512, cover the if statements and tutorial 3 and expression 2 series. We'll set x equal to 0. All right, so let's see what that does. Oh, it doesn't exist. Um, let's put this as an output because we can't increment input. So we'll say x. And we actually don't need this persist, I lied. Whoops. All right, so as you can see, now the rounded box is getting smoother and smoother and more rounded more rounded until 512 when it's a circle so that's everything i have to show you about the emitter uh, if you have any questions about it please let me know in the uh, comments below and until then i will see you in the next video